<laughs> uh, I would like to briefly discuss two or three interconnected happenings in Balochistan. But when we discuss Pakistan in our discourses, we must remember that Pakistan is a is not a country, it's not a state in real terms. It is an outpost of United Kingdom and the United States of America. It was not created by the will of the people. It was created only to safeguard the interest of the British Empire and the United States of America and that region. So what such kind of a state will do is anybody's guess. So what is happening to the oppressed nation in Pakistan, especially in, Balo in Balochistan. The state has successfully manipulated as patrons or benefactors in the world that they are the only protector of their interest in that part of the world. Others are just your enemies. And if you protect us, if you give us money or financial support or military support, we will do the, your dirty job in that region. And in exchange, what they will do they have, they have found opportunities several times to crush the Baloch people in our lifetime. When he, Pakistan became a member of CETO Sinto, in return of financial and military aid, they thought that it is time to crush the, the, the nascent or only emerging Baluch resistance movement in 1950s and 1960s. For the imprisoned Baluch leadership for years, they hanged Nawab Nuruz Khan and his colleagues in 1962. And that same thing happened in 1970s when the Cold War didn't speak and nobody in the Western world or international community bothered to ask Pakistan why you are doing this. Because Pakistani army is the protector or guardian or the guards of their outpost. Oh, when in aftermath, in the aftermath of the 9-11, the Western world occupied Afghanistan. It became another chance for the military to crush the Baloch resistance. Because Pakistan was vital in many aspects to stabilize the Western present in Afghanistan. The Pakistani army got unlimited financial 
resources and military and political favors. So they thought it is the proper time to crush the Baluch resistance once and for all. We can observe that when the military in 19, early 19, uh, 2000s, they began the military operation in Balochistan. There was no word from the international community or the civilized world. And they successfully exploited the weaknesses of the international community regarding the Afghan situation and crushing the Baloch national resistance. And I can visualize something very lethal, very dangerous to our people. For some months, they are, they have been pressurizing Pakistani military for some reasons which are now becoming obvious. And now they have come to an understanding that they will supply some financial resources to the military. And the military, in my belief, in my experience, will take this opportunity to, to initiate another crush, crushing initiative to our people in Balochistan. Now, two years ago, three years ago, Afghanistan was delegated by the United States and the United Kingdom to the Pakistani military to secure their interest in that region because they withdraw, they wanted to withdraw for some internal reasons. So now, on this service, they are providing financial and political support to the military regime. What I think the military regime will do, our military regime will continue to increase its plan, our strategy, uh, to impose its strategy further and with, with force. That is, one is to entirely destroy the Baluch national identity, to destroy entirely the Baluch social and cultural values. They are portraying members of the death squad, local and international drug traffickers, and mullahs as the representative of the Baloch society. They are now openly giving the government of Baluchistan, so-called province of Baluchistan, to these people. What are the consequences of such things? If it continues for, for example, 10 or 15 years, it means that after 10 and 15 years, our social cultural, traditional, and national identity will, will be totally changed. 
when a drug trafficker represents you in international forums, when a Ditti Squad member will be your governor or government chief, chief governor governing operative in the province, and when a mullah in a place like Gwadar will be the representative of your people, what will be our national identity? What we will be fighting for? So these are very dangerous situations. These are not, there is no safe ground left for us. And I think in the coming months, two, three months, we can see a crackdown on the only remaining activists. And I think there will be another spat of kill and dump policy. But what we can do, I think if people without friends, without a state to openly support us, we can only, with our limited academic and material resources. We can only focus, and I appreciate this initiative of Baloch National Movement to, to, to focus the mm, British parliamentarians, because Pakistan is nothing without the support of United Kingdom and the United States. A one single statement from the government of United Kingdom and United States will shake the entire military and the social fabrics of Pakistan. Only six months stoppage of aid to Pakistan will force the military regime to knee. So this, what, can, what we can do is to focus on the British and the United States policy makers are the people concerned with the with South Central Asia. Because what we say international community, in real term, international community is not Europe. International community is not Asia or Africa or Russia. International community simply means United States and its allies, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. They are the real gods of the world in today's uh, geopolitical situation. There is no other pole. It is a unipolar world. So I think with a coordinated effort, we can at least convince a section of the society in the United Kingdom and the United States that if you talk about human rights, if you talk about democratic values, if you talk about the right of self-determination of the nations, which was the term used by the United States President Woodrow Wilson. So consider the Baluch and Sindhis and other oppressed nations who has been wrongly incorporated by you people in a wrong, fake, and rogue state. So that, that is what we can do. And I think the other thing which 
our, our people here in diaspora should convey to their friends in Pakistan that they should be prepared for a crackdown or a new kind of military operation what in whatever way they 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 can save their skin thank you